Good evening. Welcome to St. Thomas More Newman Center. For those of you who are using one of our missalettes, today's readings begin, uh, the first reading begins on the bottom of page 678, page 678. We will begin in just a moment. Thank you. Remember your mercies, O Lord, and with your eternal protection, sanctify your servants, for whom Christ your Son, by the shedding of his blood, established the Paschal Mystery, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be raised high and greatly exalted. Even as many were amazed at him, so marred was his look beyond human semblance and his appearance beyond that of the sons of man. So shall he startle many nations. Because of him, kings shall stand speechless. 
for those who have not been told shall see. Those who have not heard shall ponder it. Who would believe what we have heard? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up like a sapling before him, like a shoot from the parched earth. There was in him no stately bearing to make us look at him, nor, nor appearance that would attract us to him. He was spurned and avoided by people, a man of suffering, accustomed to infirmity, one of those from whom people hide their faces, spurned, and we held him in no esteem. Yet it was our infirmities that he bore, our sufferings that he endured, while we thought of him as stricken, as one smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our offenses, crushed for our sins. Upon him was the chastisement that makes us whole. By his stripes, we were healed. We had all gone astray like sheep, each following his own way. But the Lord laid upon him the guilt of us all. Though he was harshly treated, he submitted and opened not his mouth, like a lamb led to the slaughter, or a sheep before the shears. He was silent and opened not his mouth. Oppressed and condemned, he was taken away, and who would have thought any more of his destiny when he was cut off from the land of the living and smitten for the sin of his people? A grave was assigned him among the wicked and a burial place with evildoers, though he had done no wrong nor spoken any falsehood. But the Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. If he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life, and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light in fullness of days, through his suffering, my servant shall justify many, and their guilt he shall bear. Therefore, I will give him his portion among the great, and he shall divide the spoils with the mighty, because he surrendered himself to death and was counted among the wicked. And he shall take away the sins of many, and win pardon for their offenses. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, 
suppose I am an object of reproach, a laughing stock to my neighbors and a dread to my friends. They who see me abroad flee from me. I am forgotten like the unremembered dead. I am like a dish that is broken. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. But my trust is in you, O Lord. I say you are my God. In your hands is my destiny. Rescue me from the clutches of my enemies and my persecutors. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your kindness. Take courage and be stout-hearted, all you who hope in the Lord. Father, into your hands I go. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way, yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. In the days when Christ was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord.
The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to where there was a garden into which he and his disciples entered. Judas, his betrayer, also knew the place because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas got a band of soldiers and guards from the chief priests and the Pharisees and went there with lantern, torches, and weapons. Jesus, knowing everything that was going to happen to him, went out and said to them, Whom are you looking for? They answered him, Jesus, the Nazarene. He said to them, I am. Judas, his betrayer, was also with them. When he said to them, I am, they turned away and fell to the ground. So he again asked them, Whom are you looking for? They said, Jesus, the Nazarene. Jesus answered, I told you that I am. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill what he had said. I have not lost any of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into its scabbard. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father gave me? So the band of soldiers, the tribune, and the Jewish guards seized Jesus, bound him, and brought him to Annas first. He was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had counseled the Jews that it was better that one man shall die rather than the people. Simon Peter, and another disciple followed Jesus. Now the other disciple was known to the high priest, and he entered the courtyard of the high priest with Jesus. But Peter stood at the gate outside. So the other disciple, the acquaintance of the high priest, went out and spoke to the gatekeeper and brought Peter in. Then the maid, who was the gatekeeper, said, to Peter. You are not one of this man's disciples, are you? He said. I am not. Now the slaves and the guards were standing around the charcoal fire that they had made because it was cold and were warming themselves. Peter was also standing there keeping warm. The high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I have spoken publicly to the world. I have always taught in a synagogue or in a temple area where all the Jews gather. And in secret I have said nothing. Why ask me? Ask those who have heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he has said this, one of the temple guards standing there struck Jesus and said, Is this the way you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, if I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing there, keeping warm, and they said to him, You are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest a relative of the one whose ear Peter had cut off, said, Didn't I see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it, and immediately the cock crowed.
They brought Jesus from Caiaphas to the Praetorium. It was morning, and they themselves did not enter the Praetorium in order not to be defiled so that they could eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and said, What charge do you bring against this man? They answered and said to him, If he were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. At this, Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews answered him, We do not have the right to execute anyone. In order that the word of Jesus might be fulfilled, that he said, indicating the kind of death he would die. So Pilate went back into the praetorium and summoned Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own, or have others told you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from hand being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. So Pilate said to him, Then you are a king. Jesus answered, You say I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? When he had said this, he again went out to the Jews and said to them, I find no guilt in him, but you have a custom that I release one prisoner to you at Passover. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, Not this one, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a revolutionary. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him scourged, and the soldiers wove a crown out of thorns and placed it on his head, and clothed him in a purple cloak. And they came to him and said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they struck him repeatedly. Once more, Pilate went out and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you, so that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple cloak, and he said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the guards saw him, they cried out, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this statement, he became even more afraid and went back into the praetorium and said to Jesus, Where are you from? Jesus did not answer him. So Pilate said to him, Do you not speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you, and I have power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me if it had not been given to you from above. For this reason, the one who handed me over to you has the greater sin. Consequently, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release him, you are not a friend of Caesar. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and seated him on the judge's bench in a place called Stone Pavement, in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was preparation day for Passover, and it was about noon. And he said to the Jews, Behold your king. They cried out, Take him away, take him away, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified.
So they took Jesus and carrying the cross himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull in Hebrew, Golgotha. There they crucified him and with him two others, one on either side with Jesus in the middle. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus the Nazarene, the king of the Jews. Now, many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. And it was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four shares, a share for each soldier. They also took his tunic, but the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top down. So they said to one another, Let's not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it will be. In order that the passage of scripture might be fulfilled that says, They divided my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. This is what the soldiers did. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary of Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. After this, a word that everything was now finished, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. There was a vessel filled with common wine, so they put a sponge soaked in wine on a sprig of hyssop and put it up to his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, It is finished and bowing his head, he handed over the Spirit. Now, since it was preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day of that week was a solemn one, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs be broken so that they can be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and then of the other one who was crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one soldier thrust his lance into his side, and immediately blood and water flowed out. An eyewitness has testified, and his testimony is true. He knows that he is speaking the truth, so that you also may come to believe. For this happened so that the scripture passage might be fulfilled. Not a bone of it will be broken. And again, another passage says, they will look upon him whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, secretly a disciple of Jesus for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate if he could remove the body of Jesus and Pilate permitted it. So he came and took his body.
Nicodemus, the one who had first come to him at night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about 100 pounds. Then they took the body of Jesus and bound it with burial cloths along with the spices, according to the Jewish burial custom. Now in the place where he had been crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden, a new tomb in which no one had yet been buried. So they laid Jesus there because of the Jewish preparation day, for the tomb was close by. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today, we remember Jesus' passion, his death, as a way of recalling how much God loves us. Jesus' willingness to die for us, willingness to suffer for us, echoes the the, the re reading from Hebrews there that, that we have a great high priest who knows our weaknesses because he is human and he suffered. Jesus' willingness to suffer with us and for us was to show how much he wanted to identify with us and so that we can identify with God. He came to show that suffering and death doesn't have the last word. That even in the midst of suffering, we could be, have that hope that God is present, that God is in charge, even though by all outward appearances it would not seem like it. But especially in John's gospel, Jesus is in charge of the whole time. Tells Pilate he would not have any power over him unless it was given to him from above. Jesus could have stopped it at any time, but he knew what he was about, following his Father's will to live and show us what it means to truly be alive, what it means to truly love the sacrificial love that that's the only way of loving that will bring life. Jesus came to show us that he didn't come to take away suffering, but to be with us in the midst of it. And he showed us that we don't have to fear death, because we know the end of this, the, the story doesn't end tonight. In three days we'll celebrate his resurrection. There could be a, a, a T-shirt, I think, I, I'd like to see a T-shirt made that, you know, that, that says, you know, death, been there, done that, no fear. Don't have to fear death. And so much of our lives, we spend running away from death and running away from suffering. And we ask God, why? Why, Lord? Why do we have to suffer? Why do the people in Ukraine and, and other parts of the world have to suffer? Why is there suffering in the world? There was a, a movie that came out many years ago called Dominic and Eugene. And Eugene had just lost, or, or Dominic had just lost his, his, his pet dog. It was hit by a car. And he really loved this dog. And, and he's there, in, in, the, in the movie, he's there kneeling in front of a bloody crucifix crying, and he's trying to understand how God, who loves him, could allow his dog, this to happen to his dog, and, 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 and looking at the crucifix, he says to Eugene, his brother, he says, how could God let them do this to his son? That's 
Jesus' willingness to suffer with us. The, the German theologian, theologian Jürgen Moltmann wrote that God cries with us so that someday we might laugh with God. Because God does know our suffering is not always there with us, crying along with us. Be compassionate with us giving us the grace and strength to realize that suffering isn't the end, that death itself isn't the end. And because of this Good Friday, we have Easter. We can celebrate in three days resurrected life. But Jesus showed us that resurrected life is only possible through that sacrificial love, through that suffering and death, by not avoiding it. You know, he always tells, told us, that his disciples, pick up your cross and follow me. Tonight, we'll venerate the cross in which Jesus hung and gave us that sign of his eternal love. Someone once asked, how much does God love you? This much. So much God loves us as he hung upon the cross with his arms as spread as wide as possible giving us his very, very body, his very blood. We'll remember that tonight. Venerate the cross, but not just venerating the cross. Venerating the cross and remembering that we too are called to follow in his way of sacrificial love that he showed us the way, that he is with us in the midst of suffering, in the midst of sacrificial love. And that in that midst, in the veneration of the cross tonight, we'll remember, we'll recall that God is with us in the midst of all of our times and, and all of the times that things don't seem to work out for us. I had the opportunity a number of years ago to, when I was visiting in Jerusalem on a pilgrimage there, to walk the Stations of the Cross, you know, with our group. And it wasn't, you know, I was surprised at how narrow the streets were. The, the streets were about as, as, as wide as this owl here without those extra chairs. They weren't, they weren't very wide at all. And there's shops on either side and people jostling one another and stuff like that. And it was dirty and dusty and mo noisy and everything like that. It wasn't a holy, quiet moment of, of remembering Jesus' death as we, you know, went from station to station on that way of the cross in Jerusalem. And that is, is a wonderful actual way to really think about that, of, of remembering what Jesus does for us. That it's not in this holy, quiet setting. We have this beautiful liturgy here in which we can quietly meditate and pray and, and sing quietly. And yet, the way of the cross, Jesus' sacrifice, happened in the midst of the messiness of everyday life. If you've ever had the occasion to do an outdoor Stations of the Cross on, on Good Friday, you know, at some location, you know, you may be there very much prayerfully intent on following those stations. If there's people all around, cars, traffic, mowers, lawnmowers, noises, and stuff like that, again, it's not a quiet moment. And yet, that's probably the most ideal way to remember this moment, in a sense, that Jesus' life and death comes in the midst of our messiness. He identifies with all of that so that we can know that, and not despair when things aren't going our way, not despair when things that we aren't in control because God is always in control. We don't have to be in control. That's the message of Good Friday, that God is in control even when we feel out of control. Even when we mess up, God is there to be there with us, suffering along with us, to raise us up eventually, just as Jesus himself was raised. Now we're going to venerate the cross in which hung our Savior, remembering that in the midst of all that messiness, his love is there for us as a sign and symbol of being there in the midst of our life our values, our messiness. It's a sign of his love 
for us for all eternity. Behold the wood of the cross in which hung our Savior. Behold the wood of the cross on which hung our Savior. Behold the wood of the cross on which hung our Savior. At this time, we invite you to approach and venerate the cross, and kneeling, touching, bowing, genuflecting, and invite you to come from like four different directions as well, and so you could have multiple people venerating the cross at the same time.
that God may gather and keep us together. Let us kneel. Let us Oh. 
at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who have restored us to life by the blessed death and resurrection of your Christ, preserve in us the work of your mercy, that by partaking of this mystery, we may have a life unceasingly devoted to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God, may abundant blessing, O Lord, we pray, descend upon your people who have honored the death of your Son in the hope of their resurrection. May pardon come, comfort be given, holy faith increase, and everlasting redemption be made secure through Christ our Lord. We hope you can join us tomorrow evening at 8 p.m. for our Easter vigil and welcome our eight new members into the, our, our Catholic faith community. <laughs>